The CNM Seeds Wheat School is brought to you by Bear Crop Science. We're here today with Ross McKenzie from the Alberta Research Station. Welcome today, Ross. Thanks. Okay, Ross, let's talk about nitrogen management on winter wheat in, in Western Canada. Uh, it's much different uh, in Western Canada than Ontario. Mm -hmm. what, is, what are some of the things we should be thinking about coming out of the winter and nitrogen on winter wheat? Yeah, and, and actually you're, meant, you're just kind of a comment on uh, west versus east. Even uh, different regions or agroecological areas of the prairies can be quite different. For example, what a person might do in terms of nitrogen management at Indian Head might be different than Lutherford, just because we're in uniquely different agroecological areas. So it's always important to kind of look at local research uh, to see what local research is is mentioning, but I'll just you know kind of give a, a general overview. But uh, if a farmer hasn't put his uh, all of nitrogen fertilizer requirements on uh, in the fall when he applied his winter wheat, then uh, really in early spring is the time you want to be going in and and uh, topping things up. First thing I always look at is what are the moisture conditions like. Do you have great moisture conditions, and if you have good yield potential, then you want to uh, be looking at uh, moderately good rates of nitrogen. If uh, you happen to be in an area where moisture conditions really aren't that great this spring, you may want to ask yourself, do, how much more nitrogen do I really put, want to put on, or maybe I should even hold off to see if the rains come. So the first question is, should, should you or should you not even put on nitrogen fertilizer depending on your moisture conditions? Assuming that they're fairly good, then the next question is, how should I get that nitrogen on? And really, a couple of ways to go. One is just to go out in fairly early spring and broadcast urea. And our work has shown over the years that as long as we put it on, uh, fairly early, uh, we actually get a quite good response with minimal volatilization. But there's been some good, interesting work done in uh, uh, in Montana with, by Montana State University that actually shows even when urea fertilizer is broadcast and your soil happens to be moist, even at uh, two or three or four degrees Celsius, they can get volatilization, which we normally kind of think wouldn't really happen. But if the soil surface, and it, that won't happen if the soil surface is dry, but if it's moist, that, that moisture activates an enzyme which starts to break down the, the granular urea. So I would only recommend, well, I, I would recommend broadcasting urea, but I would not recommend you do it until the soil surface is dry. And then kind of look ahead if there's hopefully, uh, as long as the, the air temperatures are less than 10 degrees Celsius, soil temperature less than 5 degrees Celsius, soil temperatures are, are, sorry, soil moisture conditions are dry, then I would do it. I try to do it when things are cool and dry and hopefully moisture, as soon as you get a, a rainfall event, then that'll move the fertilizer into the soil. Now, if you're concerned about potential gassing off or volatilization of that fertilizer, then I'd suggest you may want to use something like uh, agrotain, that's a urease inhibitor, that prevents that enzyme from attacking that fertilizer. and gives you 10 to 14 days of protection. And so if that's a concern uh, where you happen to be, or if you're gonna have to broadcast your fertilizer when the soils are moist, definitely I would be coating with agrotain to give you increased protection. Does ESN have a place with winter wheat? Well, and that's a great question. It has a great place in the fall if you want to uh, uh, band or side band or seed place your fertilizer. But in a broadcast situation, the ESN, which is environmentally smart nitrogen, it's, it's a polymer or plastic coated uh, gran granules of uh, urea. It's, it's a great product in certain situations, but our work is showing that when you broadcast that even on, even in very early spring, it just releases too slowly to be beneficial. It's very well protected, but it releases too slowly to be a benefit. And so for that reason, I don't normally recommend the ESN. And other products you could use, well, I know there's been some good work with uh, drill banding uh, liquid 2800 um, uh, in the, in the, at the Indian Head uh, uh, Research Center there by uh, Guy Lafond. And that's certainly an option as well. You could dribble banding on the, the liquid 2800. The nice thing about the liquid is a quarter of that is nitrate, which is immediately available to help the crop get, get up, up and running. Um, but half of that product is also urea, subject to volatilization. So again, if you're concerned about if that soil surface is moist when you're dribble banding on that liquid, there's potential for volatilization. So then ask yourself, should I be using something to reduce that potential? And so agrotain can actually even be added to liquid fertilizer to reduce that. So um, look at your risks, and if your risks are higher, you may want to use something like agrotain to give you some protection. Or if your risks are relatively low, then uh, you probably don't need any protection. But it's something to think about. Thanks a lot, Ross, and we'll talk to you again soon.